In this video, I'm going to review the Hardy Creative Studios website, stack it against the competition, and hopefully inspire you to create better web designs and make more money selling higher quality websites. So if you want to know whether this website passes my truly professional website test assessment, make sure you watch until the end when I will reveal its grade and income potential. Hello, I'm your host Casino. I'm the Digital Alchemist, and in this new series, the goal here is not to focus on flashy websites that require an army of designers and developers to build. Nope. But instead, the idea is to focus on one website design that could be created by one single person or by a very small team. And this in order to inspire you and help you assess the quality and potential income of a website. So today I'm going to focus on the Hardy Creative Studios website. So I found this website on the awards website in the nominees category right here. Now, it's a digital creative studio, but I want you to keep an open mind because this type of website could also be used for other industries like art galleries because art galleries, they do have the budgets for higher quality websites. And just so we're on the same page, here is how I'm going to proceed. I will assess this website over four topics. First impressions, identity, content, and technical. Each topic will be noted on 5 points and the final assessment will be noted on 20 points. Now please know that this is my subjective assessment and not the universal truth, but I've been creating websites for a living for many years and I have quite some experience doing that. So let's start with the first impressions that can be broken down into desktop, mobile, tablet and versus the competition. Ok, let's talk about first impressions and contrary to the previous episode in the series, I do get this wow effect when I land on this page. This is my first impression. I was like, wow, this is so clean. This is so beautiful. So if you're looking for a digital studio or like I said, it could be an art galleries, anything creative. It's like, wow, it screams high end. Look at the white space, but we'll talk about that more specifically later. But just the first overall impression, it's really clean. It's really high scale. And this is what you want to get if you're in this industry. If you're in the creative industry, you don't want to look like a cheapo, right? And I think it's really well done here. So some of the things I like, we'll see that later, but just click open the navigation and yeah, you get this wow effect everywhere. Even though it's really simple, but you know, trying to be simple is the hardest thing in design. It looks really simple, but let me tell you, there's been countless hours put into this design to make everything looks really, really beautiful. And the same goes on this page. This is the portfolio. When you open a page, it's like, yeah, it's really consistent. You also get this scrolling text effect here. And I think it's really, like I said, consistent, but just beautiful. Look at the squares here and just the overall design. I really like what they did. It's squarey, but it works really well. It's just beautiful. Now the same goes for the mobile version. It doesn't feel like a cheap version of the desktop version. As you know, most people will see this on a mobile and from the navigation to the pages, you even get the scrolling, uh, horizontal scrolling effect. And when you get into the pages, the same beautiful layout is really well translated to the mobile uh, canvas. And I really like that. It just looks beautiful. You're going to hear beautiful a lot in this review, but that's the truth. And now the tablet version. And I do also get this wow effect on the tablet version. You can really see the care that they put even into this version, even though I know that not many people will watch a website on a tablet, but still it looks great. And I like how they use the white space here on the tablet version, but all in all, very consistent, just a beautiful experience all the way through, whether you are on a desktop, on a mobile or on a tablet. Okay, now let's stack it versus the competition. So I type Creative Studio London because they're based in London. And let me show you the first few results. So this is the first one, beautiful images. Don't get me wrong, I'm not criticizing those websites. I just wanna show you how it stacks against the competition. So that's another one with very big images and videos. That's another one, really trendy, but some of the trends that I don't really like, um, but it's really well executed. Then we got this one, very colorful and even more colorful, we got this one, but a bit more traditional. And when you stack all these websites against this one, I feel like this one really has the higher end scale feel. So if you have a, if you're a client with budget and you see all of the first websites and then you land on this one, like I said, the first impression for me is that this one should offer something better, 
might be wrong, but that's the feeling I get out of it. And I think it's really important, especially when you're a small studio. I don't know if it's a small studio, but I would guess that those ones, the first results in Google would be the bigger studios. But this one really makes a difference when you just land on the page. So for all these reasons, for the first impressions, I'm going to give it a grade of 4.5 out of 5. Okay, next let's move on to the identity, which can be broken down into the logo, the colors, the fonts, and the style versus the target. Okay, let's start with the logo. And if you know anything about me, you know that I love typographic logos, especially I love this font and the square dot. And also the fact that we got this 90 degrees angle. I think that it really sets it apart and gives it a really creative vibe, especially when we stack it against the competition. So once again, let's look at the competition. We got this one. We got this one. This one another typographic logo, we got Pogo Studio, AdWorks, and Hug. Now these are all great logos, don't get me wrong, but when you stack it against this one, it just looks more creative, even though it's really simple, but the, the font is beautiful and that 90 degrees angle is just so, so great. Okay, next let's look at the color palette and that's gonna be easy because it's just black and white. Now, of course, uh, you also do get some images with colors, but for the color palette, it's just black and white and it works really well. <laughs> that, that's the intention here. They want to make it look high scale. Now, I'm wondering, and we'll talk about that later when we talk about the funnel, but should there have been another color, you know, to make things stand out? Well, yes and no, because when you really want to have a black and white color palette, you don't want to mess it with another color. That's not the point. So you should find other ways to draw attention. But for the rest, it works really well, in my opinion. It really gives you this feeling of, yeah, it's a high scale, I mean, high end. And yeah, I might pay more, but it's really going to be top class. Okay, next let's talk about the font. This is gonna be pretty easy because basically they're using one font, which is the Helix font with different weight variations. So this one is Helix regular. Then we have, uh, let me scroll down, still regular. We have Helix light. And here we have, uh, once again, Helix regular. So basically it's Helix regular and Helix light. Now, the font itself, I do feel that it's high-end, but just personally, I don't like like the A here, you know, the square A, but I totally understand that that's the intention and they really want something that that's really different and it works. It works because it creates a strong identity. Now, for the, the rest of the letters, most of them, I like it. Maybe not the M, but the font itself is really high-end. Now, the thing is, you know, colors and taste, everybody can have a different taste. What matters here is that they have a very strong identity and it looks really, really professional. Now, when it comes to the style of the website versus the target, I assume they are targeting clients with a nice enough budget that they want something really crafted, really custom made, really high end. And in that perspective, I think it works really well. Once again, the color palette, the, the fonts, the style, the overall style, it really feels like it's really upscale. So for all these reasons, for the identity, I'm going to give it a grade of 4.5 out of 5. Okay, next, let's move on to the content topic, which can be broken down into navigation, quantity, quality, and funnel. Okay, so let's start with the navigation. And first of all, I really love this. So first of all, the icon, and then when you hover over the uh, hamburger icon, you can see it's inverted. And if you wanna know how to build that, I'll let you know at the end of this video, but first let me open it. So let me scroll back out and this is what we get. It's just beautiful, full screen, really bold. And when you hover over the element, you see the outline version. So I think it really looks beautiful. And once again, it looks high end, but there's one caveat. So for example, if you try to kick on the top bar here, it doesn't work, nothing happens. So technically we'll talk about that later, but yeah, uh, that's really annoying, especially when it comes to the navigation. So the second thing is when you click on the escape key, as you can see, I'm hitting the escape key, well, nothing happens. And that's really bad because users are used to using the escape key on desktop. 
And last but not least, I wish there was a home button. I know uh, most people know you click on the logo, you get on home, but still, even if you are a digital creative studio, maybe your customers aren't. And if they want to go back to the home page, yeah, there's a debate. Should you put the home button or not? But I would have added the home personally, even if it was in a smaller scale, but I would have added it. Okay, next let's talk about the quantity of content. And I feel like there's not much content on the website, which is wrong because when you get to the uh, work page, as you can see here, you can filter elements. And then once you get on the page, let me click on this. That's quite enough content and it's really well laid out. So not a lot of content, but then again, on this type of websites, you don't want to write entire books. You just want to convince people with images. So I feel like there's a good balance. And now when it comes to the quality of the content, the visuals are beautiful. Even the, the quality, the optimization of the images is right in my opinion. And the text is very well written, which is a must when you are a digital creative studio. But still, I found so many examples where, you know, a lot of typos and errors and here it looks really good. It's really well executed. Now let's talk about the funnel. Well, in terms of funnel, it's really discreet. I mentioned this with the color palette, but you don't really see the call to actions. Actually, there is a call to action here at the very bottom a project in mind, let's talk. It's not really aggressive, but then again, maybe they don't want to be aggressive. I still feel like they should or could have put a little bit more obvious to try to draw people to contact them. But then again, we don't know their business models and how they get their customers. A lot of creative studios, they don't get the customers through Google. They get the customers through hearsay, through uh, word of mouth, and the website is just there to showcase the portfolio. So for all of these reasons, for the content part, I'm going to give it a grade of four out of five. Okay, next let's move on to the technical side of things, which can be broken down into speed, dynamism, interactions, and the use of trends. Okay, so let's start with the speed. And of course, it depends on your internet connection. Now, I'm supposed to have a really good internet connection, but let me show you. So if I click here, I go to work. So it's not really slow, but I still feel like it's a tad slowish, if I can say, but it's not really slow. But the first time I loaded the website, it felt a bit slow on the home page, which is weird because the, the, there weren't that many images. But then again, maybe something with my connection today. For the rest, it loads quite fast, especially given the quality of the images. And I can see there is some uh, progressive loading, some lazy loading. So I really think they try to optimize this. And all in all, it works good, in my opinion. Now, of course, we always want the fastest website, but what matters is that you don't get frustrated and then never got frustrated by browsing this website. Okay, next let's talk about dynamism for the lack of a better word. But what I mean is, does the website feel alive and not flat? And from the get go, this is the case with the horizontally scrolling text and image here. For the rest of the pages, once again, you get that scrolling text. And what I like is like, for example, when you are in the portfolio section, let's go there and then you just click on any item and you scroll to the bottom of the page. Even the title has this uh, horizontally scrolling effect. And same thing when you go to the end of the page, next project, once again, we get this effect. So not many effects, but subtle enough and it works really well in my opinion. Next, there aren't many interactions, but they are well made. So for example, when I hover over the text here, it stops. And when I hover over the hamburger icon, you can see it's inverted. And if I open the navigation, same thing, you see the inverted custom mouse cursor. And I think that's enough. You don't want to have too many interactions, but it works well in my opinion. And next, let's talk about use of trends. And as you can see, we got the gigantic font, which is a very, very current trend. Gigantic everything, so that works really well. And what I love is that they didn't use all the um, asymmetrical design with weird, crazy bunch of fonts, which I totally hate. So kudos to them for this. And I know, I know it's really subjective, but hey, it's my opinion. So for all these reasons, I was going to give it a score, but because of the caveat of the navigation, the fact that you can hit escape or that you can click on the top bar and it's not going to close the navigation, I'm going to give it a grade of four out of five. 
and without that it would have gotten a better grade. So at the time of recording this video and reviewing this website, if we add all the grades for the different parts, we get a final grade of 17 out of 20, which is a very good grade. Knowing that I consider anything 14 and above a professional website that you can sell for a higher than average price. Okay, now let's talk about income potential. Now, a little disclaimer here. When we talk about income potential, of course, where you live really matters. Do you live in Switzerland or in Bangladesh, in the United States of America or in Romania? But that being said, but if you factor in the clean minimal design, the beautiful UI and the very strong identity, and also the fact that there aren't that many technical hurdles like you find in a typical e-commerce website, there is no complex technique and no heavy video production, then you could sell this website between 4K and 15K depending on your sales skills. Here I'm talking in dollars or it could be euro depending on the conversion rate. But don't forget, some people would never be able to sell this website for more than 500 bucks that with the same quality, of course, but they wouldn't be able to sell more than 500 bucks, while others would sell it for a minimum of 100K. So it really depends on your sales skills. And like we saw a moment ago, it also depends on your location because $5,000 isn't the same thing in Los Angeles and in Bangkok. That's the hard truth. But I'm just giving you an average income potential. Now, of course, whether you create this website in six weeks, three months, six months, or a year is also going to determine if it's profitable or not. But let's say that this website did cost between 4K and 15K. Well, my guess is that the company would be very, very happy with the end result, especially when you stack it against the competition. Now, I know, I know, if you are a creative studio yourself, you're supposed to be able to create your own website and not outsource it to another studio. I know that. But at the beginning of this video, I asked you to keep an open mind because this type of website can be used for a lot of creative industries. So for example, you could create a similar website, but for an art gallery. And in that case, I think the company would be very, very happy with the end result, like I said. Now, how would I build it? Well, it doesn't really matter if you outsource the development, hand code it yourself or use WordPress. Clients only care about end results and return on investment. Now, personally, I think I could build something similar with WordPress, Elementor Pro, affiliate link in the description, plus probably Jet Engine and WP Rockets, just to give you an idea of the main plugins I would be using. But of course, you could build this with Bricks, with Gutenberg, or with the builder that you are most efficient with. At the end of the day, they are just tools. What matters is the end result. Now, if you're trying to build this with WordPress and you'd like to know how to create this beautiful full screen navigation with the custom inverted cursor, and also if you'd like to know how to create this horizontally scrolling text, you will find a link in the description below to tutorials that I created here on the channel to achieve just that. Okay, so today we reviewed a Creative Studios website, but which type of industry's website would you like me to review next? Please let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video and my work, please give it a thumbs up because it's really gonna help the channel and it doesn't cost you a dime. And if you want more web design goodness, consider subscribing and smashing the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. I hope that this video will help you become a better web designer and sell higher end websites. Now, if you're trying to build this type of website, why not start by creating a similar full screen, beautiful navigation by clicking on the video appearing on screen right now. Don't forget, I'm trying to build the content I wish I had when I got started. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, take care and stay safe. Cut.